first thing you're gonna wanna choose is a resin. And this isn't like a lifelong commitment or anything, but you just wanna get kind of in the general right area. And I break down resins into like three main categories, the water washable, the you know kind of standard resins, and number three, the engineering resins. I use a lot of engineering resins, but depending on what you're printing, you might wanna use one of the other two. And that's really gonna drive a lot of the decisions we're gonna make kind of going forward. Number two is a washing solution. Once you print a resin 3D print, you need to get all the excess resin off of it. And again, this is really contingent on what kind of resin you're using. If you're using a water washable resin, obviously you're gonna wash it in water. And that's gonna have a different kind of washing solution than say an engineering resin that only wants to be in isopropyl alcohol or denatured alcohol for 30 seconds. Right? So if we were using a water washable resin, you might be able to use something like an ultrasonic cleaner. It's super easy, super convenient. A quick note about water washable resins real quick. Don't do them in the sink. Do not wash uncured resin down the sink. That is not what water washable means. You need to have it in a container and you need to dispose of it properly, which usually means setting out your container in the sun, curing all that resin, filtering it out and throwing it in the trash. Just a quick note. If you're using a standard resin that likes to be cleaned in IPA, you know, 90 to 95% IPA, then you can probably use a wash and cure station. These have a combination of a big bucket that goes in there, has a magnetic stirrer on it, stirs it up, and it cleans the resin off that way. It also cures, but we'll get to that in a second. If you're using an engineering resin, you probably just want a large airtight container. Again, I use Sorriatech Sculpt, Sorriatech Build, Sorriatech Fast, all of these are indicated by Sorriatech to not want to be in your cleaning solution for longer than about 30 seconds. Most of the wash machines I've seen have a minimum of 30 seconds on the timer. So yes, you could throw them in there, pull them out early, but it's just too much of a hassle in my book. You might as well dunk them in there, rinse them off, dry them off, wait, do it again, do it again, do it again. And that leads us to the curing solution. Now you can get a wash and cure station. I have a couple and I only really use them for curing. Like I mentioned, I use engineering resin. But you can also go dirt cheap here. You can go free basically with the sun, depending on the resin you use, depending on where you live, right? If you live in a place that doesn't get a lot of sun, probably not a good choice. But at the beginning, you know, you can just pop this thing out in the sun, maybe put it on a mirror or something, a reflective surface, and you can cure it that way. It'll take a fairly long time though. You can also kind of cobble together your own curing box. I cobbled one together with UV LED lights and a CFL UV bulb. I put those inside of a box mounted with some uh, reflective tape and I got a cheap little UV powered um, carousel rotator dealy do. That's the technical term, dealy do. And it works great. You know, the only reason I moved away from that to a normal curing station is that I would just walk away and forget things were curing and I just like cure them for like literally 24 hours. It was a total mess. Like that's just me, right? You could easily put it on a timer if you wanted to, right? But it cures just fine, right? You just want to make sure your UVs are in the, like the 395 to 405 nanometer range. That's what's going to cure your resin. And away you go. It's pretty cheap. Now, the curing stations are also very, very nice. They have rotating trays, have a timer on there. Uh, they generally work really well. They generally have high quality UV lights and they're not terribly expensive, right? You can get them for around $200, $295. I have the Anycubic. Um, big one, I don't even know what it's called. And I think it's around $300 and it's great. Now we get into the safety zone. Gloves, you do not under any circumstance wanna handle uncured resin, get it on your skin or in your eyes. So the first defense of that is gloves. And I actually have two different kind of gloves. I have some very large long sleeved nitro chemical resistant gloves that I use for what I like to call kind of bulk operations or really things that don't require a ton of dexterity, right? Getting things off the build plate, pulling the build plate out of the printer after you're done. You can use these big bulky gloves and you're gonna generally be okay. The great thing about them is they'll last forever. You can dunk them in your cleaning solution, kind of rub your hands together and wash them off to get them clean. And they last a very long time. I've had mine for like eight months now and they're still going strong. Then the second type of glove you wanna get is what you see a lot of people using, which are the nitrile gloves that you uh, pull on, you know, they're like, they're like the exam glove kind of things going on. Those are great. You could use those all the time, but the cost really starts to add up. So I like to only use these when I'm doing something that requires a little bit more dexterity, a little bit more fine control. 
Generally, if I have a screwdriver in my hand, I'm unscrewing the build plate to level it, you know, that kind of stuff. It really just depends on what you're doing and how much dexterity you need and how much cost you want to incur over the life of your printer. I usually pick them up at Harbor Freight has kind of the best deal on printers. Why am I doing this? Like, ooh la la, the Harbor Freight gloves are the best. Whew. You can also, of course, order them on Amazon, wherever you want to go. Next up is eye protection. So I really can't see up close, so I'm generally rocking my glasses. Not the greatest eye protection, but pretty decent, right? Just as you don't want to get uncured resin on your skin, you definitely don't want to get it in your eyes. That's going to be a trip to some sort of emergency room facility. Not good. So goggles, glasses, general everyday eye protection stuff. Wear it. Don't be a dork. Resin does tend to splash sometimes. Removing things from the build plate, things pop up, pop off. Uh, I've dropped entire bottles of open resin on the floor. Like, it's easy to make a mess with resin. Trust me. Number two is some sort of respiratory support, I'll call it, right? You can use a respirator. In this case, you want to use one that's rated for organic chemicals. I'll have a link to one below that I just picked up. It needs to have uh, vapors and activated carbon, activated carbon, activated charcoal uh, filtration to get out all of the chemicals coming in. You can also use a variety of venting solutions. I have a 1600 CFM vent fan in the ceiling up here. And when I'm moving around a lot of prints, when I'm printing a ton, I have that thing running. It's very loud, that's why it's not running right now. So that will evacuate the air in my space once every two minutes, right? So crank that thing up. I have it hooked up to my Alexa. And uh, she'll crank it up for me whenever I need it. So if you wanna combine both eye protection and ventilation, one of the things that I use Specifically, if I'm dealing with bulk resins, or I actually use this when I'm shooting my soft plastic lures because that stuff irritates the crap out of my eyes, is this bad boy. Ah! I sound like a woogie. This thing rocks. Yeah! Woo! I know some of you are thinking that's total overkill, right? But. We're doing this for fun. You don't want to feel like crap afterwards because your eyes are burning or your nose is burning or you've sucked in some cancer causing chemical. It's not cool, bro. Get protected. Next up, I really love these silicone mats. Now there's companies that make 3D printer silicone mats. Um, they, it's a silicone mat, bro. Like it's no different. I ordered these, I think triple XL, double XL pet food silicone mats that are fantastic. They have a lip around the edge. And really this is to contain any spills you have of resin. And they're much easier to clean up than most tables. I have a stainless steel table, prep table, that works great. Would be easy to clean, but there's no lip. So if I make a massive disaster spilling resin on a table with no lip, it's gonna get everywhere. With the silicone mats, it's contained inside that mat and makes it super easy to clean up. Just get some. And last, if it wasn't already clear, you probably don't want to be having a resin 3D printer in your house or anywhere you're going to be hanging out a bunch. So that might mean it's outside in an unconditioned space. Most resins like to be a little warm when you print them. Some of them have kind of very specific ranges. Again, engineering resins that I use, Sculpt, Build, Fast, all from Soritech. They like to be at least above, at or above 25 degrees Celsius to get optimum print results. That probably means that you need some sort of heating solution. I've already covered a couple of heating solutions and I put them in the playlist right here to go check out. Take care everybody, enjoy the resin 3D printer, make some awesome stuff. If you're using a water washable, what? Well, water washable? Then a normal kind of uh, clean washing eh, and a big uh, LED. Eh. And you know, I was up and curing for relatively a little bit. Grr, tiger.